Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, it's that time of year, folks, the beginning of football season. With great anticipation, so many people get so excited for their favorite team. Because who knows, this year could be the year that their team makes it to the Super Bowl. And in showing their allegiance, football fans adorn their bodies with hats, helmets, shirts, sweatshirts, socks, scarves, team logos, shoelaces, and of course their favorite team blanket. In their hands they carry cups, foam fingers saying, hey, we're number one, or they have you know, the bobblehead figures and so forth. Everything that you could want to show your team fanaticism if possible. And I'm sure wish I really knew what that meant. Boy, my head seems to be a little bit cold. <laughs> But well, we do this because it is our team, our players, our game. By the way, go Cowboys. And we hear the same excitement in our gospel too. And Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answer him. John the Baptist and others, Elijah's and still others, one of the prophets. Then he asks them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter stands up with such passion and boldly proclaims, you are the Messiah. While it doesn't say anything, excuse me, while it doesn't say anything in scripture about how Jesus reacted, I'm pretty sure Jesus must have had a little excitement in his, well, his brain or something like that about Peter's answer. Finally, we have a team player, someone who gets it, someone who is a fan for Christ. And with this encouragement, Jesus lays out his plan of grace. A game plan that is tough. A plan that will be a challenge. There will be mountains to climb and things to well, swim through and so forth. But in the greater scheme of things, Christ wins. Resurrection will happen. Your life will begin again. So let's celebrate this amazing grace-filled game plan. But wouldn't you know it, not everyone is following those teachings of Jesus, including the Christ superfan named Peter, who not only doesn't follow this game plan, but Peter really doesn't want anything to do with it. So in a short amount of time, Peter first becomes a superfan of Jesus, but then in the next, his confession of Jesus' identity suddenly becomes meaningless, empty words that trusts not in Jesus, but only in human things that will continually fall short, that will continually maybe break or even crumble. In our Gospels, it is, Peter is often portrayed as a leader, a real go-getter type of guy. Yet, if we really study who Peter is, perhaps Peter should have the title that Thomas is often given and that be one of doubting. Yes, he is the first to go. Yes, he is the first to jump out of the boat and try to walk on water. He is the first to confess, but he's also the first to, well, really doubt. Doubt when he starts to sink. He starts to doubt when he misses the point, and he doubts when he well, denies his loyalty, his love of Jesus, his Lord and Savior. And it sounds like Peter is being an excellent human with human characteristics, suffering with and suffocating with in his humanness. And now surprisingly, I find Peter's doubting tremendously hopeful, and maybe you do as well. For seeing the leader, the so-called leader of the disciples falling short and it allows me to wonder and examine my own faith to see how my emptiness can be filled with Jesus' weightiness. Where my words and my faith are not empty, but they are life-giving. So who do you say that Jesus is? And I'm sure you have a word or two to the answer to that question, like shepherd or the love of your life or savior, messiah. Those words are just fine. But now ask yourself this. 
Is there a story to tell with your answer? Or is it just an answer? Empty words. My hope is that you have a story to tell that is declared by Deuteronomy 6, 5, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Loving God this much is the weightiness for faith. Your faith proclamation. God and you are actually in cahoots with one another, but then, but then your faith is in relationship that causes you to respond as it's proclaimed in Leviticus 19.18, to love your neighbor as yourself. And this is why we are wearing our fashion yellow t-shirts for today that look a little something like this. I didn't put it on because I was out there working today where it says God's work, our hands. And of course, we have our wonderful logo on there where it says Christ the King, the Lutheran Church. But we wear these shirts as just one way to respond to God's love for us by serving our community out there you know, beyond our church walls, where there are people who are in such need, who are, there are people out there who are longing to hear and to see God's love with you and your faith. So ask yourself, are you a super fan of Christ? And in response, I hope you say, well, yes, of course, pastor. But I also hope it, it's in reference to what John, the Gospel of John says in chapter 21, where Jesus says, Do you love me? To Peter. And Peter responds, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus responds again, Now, let's tend his sheep. 